All right, I'm, I am back. I wanted to do one more segment on this hub before I put it back together to show how this sequencer works here. And I have the parts which form the essence of how this uh, functions. I have the high-speed driving screw with the um, sequencer. And I have the high-speed driving uh, clutch and there's the external taper that engages the hub shell there's the secondary drag spring with its two little ears which are used to engage the transfer piece and the low speed driving clutch and I wanted to show on the inside of this there is knurling in here and that forms a ratchet which drives the uh, sequencer spring these little projections here are the drive pawls that advance the sequencer each time the um, pedals are turned backwards and then forwards again there's a couple different elements to the sequencer I want to try to show you also try to get at the right angle here so I can do this one handed okay so let's look at this there's the lockout tab which does the actual locking out of the um, high speed clutch so that it uh, cannot engage so that you get low speed. There's the indexing spring which indexes in the notches in this sleeve here and then there are the drive paws which actually help to advance this forward each time. And here you can see the indexing taking place Okay. There's the clutch. We're going to put it over so you can see what happens there. So there we are indexed for high speed driving. Now we are indexed for low speed driving. So you can see the ratchet action happening there as I turn the assembly in the direction that it would go if the rider were back pedaling. You see the sequencer advancing and you hear it click the index there, the detent where it indexes, and then you pedal forward and you hear the ratchet of those knurls and those spring fingers come round and now as you can see we are set for high speed driving now we're going to back pedal again there it indexed now we forward pedal again now we are indexed for low speed driving so it's a very, very simple device. Amazingly simple. That's all that's required for this to operate, is that simple sequencing mechanism. So you can hear the ratchet action. Like I said, it works just like the ratchet in a clock. There it drives it forward. There it ratchets back. So we are in the locked out position. So we are in low speed. 
expanses it forward. Even though we're turning, this is the direction that the parts would move relative to each other if we were backpedaling. That's how it advances the sequencer is during the backward motion of the pedals. Then when you go to go forward again, it ratchets, and then here we go. We are in the um, high speed. So anyway, I wanted to do this extra video to share that with you so you could see how that works. That is the heart of this hub, and that is the most delicate part of the hub, is that sequencing element, which is just a stamped piece of spring steel. Everything else is pretty pretty rigidly made. Here's the um, here's the low speed driving uh, screw with the planet carrier, and there's the planet pinions. This is the low speed um, clutch, and so in this direction it's engaging low speed, and in this direction is the braking direction. And as I said, all braking action happens through the low speed clutch. So, glad you were able to follow along. I hope that clears up any um, confusion or questions that may have arisen about how this hub works. Uh, I think it's a pretty neat hub. Um, I need to get in gear and get this thing mounted on the bicycle, but then I wouldn't have a second uh, hub to sit here and, and demonstrate how it works. So, I guess that's a good reason why to own two. <laughs> anyway. Alright, well thank you for watching. This is Oklahoma Bridges. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye.